doing a review of a vehicle is sometimes quite difficult. I, I, I need to do an honest review. To get a feel for a vehicle, I believe you've actually got to, you've got to live with it. Spend time with it. I have done now almost two weeks through the Western Cape, Eastern Cape and into Natal. And it's also difficult because there are so many vehicles so similar. So if I had to choose one, if I, I'm a, I was buying a, a double cab pickup, how would I choose one? I, I just, I don't know where to start. And somebody going into a, um, a dealership and finding a vehicle to buy, selecting the right one, they can't, by taking it around the block and take it for a test drive, decide it's not possible. So how do I how do I make a comparison of the of the Isuzu? I've had it for long enough now to get a real feel for it. In terms of four-wheel driving, it's not regarded as one of the best off-roaders. I think the Hilux is regarded better, more highly. I think the Ford, likewise. Uh, Nissan, not anymore. But this turned out to be fantastic in a number of ways. Now, we took it through the Western Cape. Lots of twisty, bendy tar. Those beautiful mountain passes of the Western Cape. And we were hit with a rain shower. A rain shower of biblical proportions. Well, traveling through the country now, um, the entire country, virtually, is under a blanket of water. Enormous amounts of rain falling. Um, I've driven most of the morning. Uh, Steve's taken over now, uh, driving up north towards Natal. And uh, actually, Steve's now actually hitting the worst of it. R very, very heavy rain, and the morons are on the road. People driving with no headlamps, overtaking on blind bends, solid white lines, in pouring rain with uh, water washing like rivers across the road. And so it's quite uncomfortable and a little bit threatening uh, to drive in this environment, to know that there could be another moron uh, putting my life Steve's life in danger around the next corner. There were floods, we didn't have to ford any deep rivers, but the rain, three days non stop pouring rain, and that was during our period of long term travel. And we went to a um, goat farm, um, Angora goat farm. And then in the lender, in uh, the farmer passionate as he was. Old, 22 years old, 92 or 96, I'm not sure. Talkative as he was. We are make use of the no-till planting method. Mad a Suzu fan, driven them for as long as he can remember. And we had to follow him up the mountain and he had a two-wheel drive vehicle, so I decided, no, there was no way I was gonna use four-wheel drive. No, 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 I was gonna make sure that my driving skills were close to his, because he, never buys four-wheel drives, interestingly enough. Only ever buys twos. So, that was, that was fantastic. And we got an insight in the pouring rain as to how an Angora goat farmer lives his life. Then the test got a little bit more difficult. Again, lots of more high-speed tar. The vehicle is very comfortable. Uh, never did I complain about backache. The seats are first-rate. Steve Searle, my good friend and camera man. You can see Pistorius was here, old Oscar. Oscar's left his mark and it's actually quite interesting. There are four holes here, the same as the toilet door. Uh, and he directed this particular episode. One, two. Uh, he's six foot four. He's not a small person. And I put it to you. And he said to me, <clears throat> this is one of the few pickups that he felt totally comfortable in, in terms of space. And in terms of space, I think this 
might even equal the Amarok, which in my view is probably the best <coughs> in that department. And then on to Stony Ridge in Natal. Uh, the 4x4 Academy is based there. Great place to test its off-road abilities. Stop there. Just look at there. Yeah, full lock. And again, we had it there for three days, so we could really, really push it, take it to its limit. Well, looking at a vehicle, I mean, any vehicle like this, I mean, just, I mean, just looking at it, you can see that its weakness is going to be clearance. All double cabs suffer the same issue because they have a long wheelbase, the breakover angle is a bit shallow. Here on this particular one, the approach angle is not great and the departure angle is not great. Some other models, uh, competitors to the KB, have slightly better and slightly worse. That will affect clearance and affect off-road performance. But that's not the whole story. Now the Isuzu also has an anti-stall device. Not all pickups have got it and it's a, such a nice thing to have. Um, even in high range, I can drive over really quite rough terrain, feet off, feet off the pedal, and the anti-stall device will keep the RPM at about 700. And so, um, you know, driving over difficult terrain very slowly is just made so easy uh, with this device. Off-road, this vehicle surprised me a great deal. Clearance issues? No, it didn't surprise me. I kind of knew what to expect. Well, the the KB's traction, traction system, it does not have a traction control as such. It has a rear differential lock. Um, it's nicely balanced off-road. Traction issues? Outstanding. The point now is actually to uh, see if we can get the vehicle across or actually get it stuck so we can demonstrate the jack. Well, it would be nice to demonstrate the jack, but we'll see if... See if I can get through there. Yeah. So you're going to go gonna down go like and, and actually around those rocks. No, okay. in front of the rocks, on this side of the rock. Oh, so I'm going to do this way. That's correct. Yeah. Oh. It looks nice and long. That. I will see if we can get it down. Otherwise, we'll low put it on the sandbar. Low second, uh, and give it a little bit of juice with the wheel when my front wheels are still up a little bit to try and get and it I through. Would just as the as the wheels, as, it's going, as, as it wants to lift itself there and then shoot it across. So but if you do it well, then we'll have to come back and do it badly. I actually couldn't believe how good it was. system is a part-time four-wheel drive, so under normal driving conditions the rear wheels are driven by just a standard differential at the back and gearbox and prop shaft and then there is a, a switch uh, in the binnacle and you engage four-wheel drive. Now the four-wheel drive system engages at speed on the road, so when it was the roads were really, really terrible where the water was flowing across the road, we occasionally put it in four-wheel drive on the tarmac. Now normally you wouldn't do that, but we did it because we started to, we could feel the vehicle being moved around by the amount of water. The low range system, all you have to do is stop the vehicle, which is the same as any vehicle, stop it, engage low range and you can hear a definitive clunk and you're then in low range. The beauty of this vehicle though is the engine. The engine can pull at such low RPM when driving through mud and thick sand, you can apply such little power and yet the wheels will still grind and turn in low first and low second that we got through very very difficult deep mud moderately easily because we didn't over rev the engine and therefore too much torque and get the wheels to spin. And we could easily, once we felt the wheels spinning, ease off just a little bit and the motor would still be there, would still be there pulling and the motor, the motor would move the vehicle through. And of course, as an overall, did, we did I enjoy the experience? Now, I'm not really a double cab man. I've owned one. I didn't keep it for very long. I'm more of a station wagon man. But I have done many trips with double cabs. 
it's as good as the best of them. I kind of wanted to find something about it that that frustrated me. The pinging when you open and close the door and leave the key in. Yep, that frustrated me. Um, it was about it, to be honest with you. It's a great pickup, a really, really good pickup. But if I had to categorize it in terms of the best pickups being the Fords in no particular order, Fords, Toyotas, Isuzu, and the Amarok, where would I put it? In terms of a working vehicle, I would probably put it near the very top. As a long distance cruising vehicle and town vehicle, I'd probably put it near the bottom. It's, it can be a bit noisy inside. Uh, it's, it's not a noisy vehicle inside, don't get me wrong. Uh, in town, it's not as smooth and forgiving as, say, the Amarok or the Hilux. On corrugations, gravel roads, it's also less accommodating. But in the rough, in some ways it's better. The ride is quite firm, so when driving over rough stuff, it doesn't bottom out. The nose doesn't do uh, dive in. It's a really, really enjoyable vehicle to drive. So if you're in the market for a pickup, uh, even if you're a bit of a 4x4 fan, it's really, really worth a good close look. I enjoyed it a lot.